Hi, I'm Steven Murawski, a developer advocate here at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to show you how VSTS can build and deploy your Azure functions in a DevOps pipeline. In this video, we'll walk through a sample build and release pipeline for an Azure function. We'll build our application with VSTS and deploy to an app service. In this release process, we'll see how we can automate the release process to support multiple environments and quality steps. We're going to dive right in and take a look at the build and release process for an Azure function. After we've taken a tour of the build and release process, we'll make a change to the application and follow it through the pipeline. All right, we are in the VSTS uh, UI on our build screen, and we're going to take a look at the build for our serverless function. We'll go edit that so we can take a look at the different build steps. Now the build for an Azure function is really just a, the typical .NET web app build, and that has all of the things that uh, it needs to know for creating an Azure function. So we don't actually have to do anything really specific. There's actually a nice template right out of the box in, in VSTS. So it's going to use NuGet to restore any uh, packages that might be needed. And in the case of our example, we don't actually have uh, many external dependencies. It's going to go through and build our solution, run any tests, and publish the resulting, uh, pro uh, resulting package. Uh, it's going to create a zip file uh, called connect, uh, connect 2017 serverless zip that is going to have the bits to deploy our serverless function. From there, after a successful build, we go to our release. And We'll take a look at the release definition so we can see what's going to happen there. This is the release pipeline view. It starts with what artifacts are generated from our build process. And we have it set to continuously deploy from successful builds into our dev environment. What this means is every successful build is going to get pushed out to the, de uh, to the dev environment and in order for that to happen, there's an Azure App Service deploy task. And that's going to take the, uh, the bits that we built in our build and push them to a particular Azure function that is in the Azure App Service. After we've deployed a dev, we can test to our heart's content, make sure it does what we expect it to do. And from there, it'll move on to our QA environment. In our QA environment, we're going to add an extra step, and we're going to do a quick load test against it to make sure that it's responding within the tolerances that we want. The load test gives us some options. We can simulate a certain number of users, how long they're going to try using the, uh, using the service for, where they're going to try using it from. Uh, in this case, we're just going to take the defaults. And before we actually get to our QA build, we will actually be prompted for a manual approval. And so this gives us an ability to, to spend some time in dev before we move on to QA. Once we move on to QA and we have a successful deployment into our QA environment and the load test runs successfully, we can provide another approval to move on to our production environment. And so we can take a look at the production environment. And that is also just a nice, simple Azure App Service deployment. Now we're going to move over to the code, and we're going to make a small change, and we're going to follow that change all the way through our release pipeline. We'll hop over into Visual Studio Code. Um, I initially created this project in Visual Studio. You can use Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code to, to modify this. Um, I have Visual Studio Code up because it's nice, light, and fast. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the response. Right now, the response from the application is welcome and then a name that gets passed in in a query string. We're going to change that to hello. So it does hello in the name. I've also got a little PowerShell script that I'm using from my local workstation to validate the response coming back from the different environments. Now, this is just a quick little pester test that takes a look that queries the URL for the different environments, my dev environment, my QA environment, my prod environment, to make sure that the correct version of the application is there. 
Now, right now it's testing that it should be welcome and we're gonna change that to hello. So let's do a quick find and replace. If I can type it properly, there we go. We'll replace all those. So now we're gonna do a quick run of our test and make sure it fails in the nice TDD workflow. So I'll invoke pester, I'll run my pester tests, and it's gonna reach out to the, the different Azure function URLs, which we've already deployed the first version of our app that returns welcome, in this case, welcome, Steve. And all the tests fail. All right, let us commit our changes. We've updated the message, so we've got a nice little commit message. And we'll push that up to our uh, VSTS Git repo. Let's hop on back over to our build definitions and see what's going on. So now we have an in-progress build. It's picked up our change. And we can go take a look at what's actually happening. So now it's waiting for an available agent. Uh, we want to build with the Visual Studio Team Services, or uh, with, with the uh, Visual Studio build agent, Visual Studio 2017 build agent, so it has all of the right projects and test capabilities to build our Azure function. You can see it cloned down the project. It's doing a NuGet restore to restore any packages that we need to build our project. And now it's building our application. Once it builds that application, it's going to run uh, any te unit tests against that and then publish that zip file that gets created as part of the build. Now that our build's completed, we can pop over to our release page and take a look at what's going on there. So we've got a release that's been created. And we should see deployment in progress to our dev environment. We can go take a look at the logs for that. And so the agent is going to pull down our uh, completed project and use the Azure App Service deployment to take those bits and upload them to Azure App Service to our Azure function. We've successfully deployed our, app, our Azure function to Azure App Service, and now we can go back to our shell and just make sure that we're seeing what we expect to in our dev environment. So we will run pester again, and now we should see... Went a little too quick there. Getting a little cached response. There we go. And after a slight little delay, and uh, we now get our proper return from our dev environment. Can't be so quick hopping back over. Now, you may notice at the top of our screen, we have a pre-deployment approval required for our QA environment. Now that I've gotten my successful test back I'm from my local workstation. I'm happy with where things are at, and I'm ready to send this on to QA. So we can approve that. And we're gonna see the same thing happen, where we're going to have our, our deployment process kick off and publish 
to Azure App Service, this time to our QA environment, but then it's gonna run a load test. Now that our load test has completed, we can take a look at the uh, load test output. And it's going to show that we ran our load test that, and there's a URL included in the output that has uh, detailed information about the output of, the, of that load test. Let's hop over and make sure now that our QA environment has the proper code there. So dev is still correct. Now we're checking against QA. QA has got the right in information. And now we just have production left to deploy to. And we have another pre-deployment approval waiting for us. What we want to do then is approve it because I'm pretty easy going that way. Let's go to production. And again, we're going to see the, the release agent deploy the code that we've built, but now into our production environment. And our production deployment has completed. So now we will go back to our pester test and see if production has picked up new code. And there we go, we have three successful tests. So we have now taken an Azure function, made a change and deployed it through our dev, our QA and production environments including approvals in the QA and production environments, and a load test in QA. Now that we've seen how VSTS can build and deploy an Azure function in a DevOps pipeline, the App Service team has a great blog post on configuring VSTS to build and deploy Azure functions. We've got a number of great sessions and uh, new features and workflows in VSTS on Channel 9's Connect Channel, and the Microsoft Virtual Academy is there to help us continue our learning. Thanks.